have their hand in everything. The, enti the entire system all over the globe is completely disrupted. We see cloud formations on NASA satellite imagery that's shocking, startling, all over the world with radio frequency transmissions mixed in. The, the signature herringbone patterns in the sky that is not the result of topography underneath as the Weather Channel paid liars would tell us. We see the same patterns over the middle of oceans which completely destroys their official lie about how these herringbone patterns is there. And we have radio frequency transmitters over the ocean because we have SPX radar, sea-based X-band radar, part of the radio frequency manipulation. So back to who runs the world, the military-industrial complex, who's the largest landlord in the world, the Pentagon. And from that report, in the United States alone, the DOD occupies 1.9 billion square feet of office space, about three times the floor space of all the nation's Walmart stores combined, or 10 times the office space of all Los Angeles. That's unfathomable. Worldwide, DOD has more than 2 million people working on 5,000 sites in countless countries military maneuvering going on in our oceans, sonar that has caused a story which I'll get to in a few moments, one of the most horrific whale beachings that happened this last week in New Zealand, nearly 500 whales now, this is happening every week, constantly, sometimes every day, all over the globe, and people are oblivious, so we have many, many factors contributing to the die off in the oceans along the, the North American West Coast, which I outlined a week ago, or perhaps the show before that, total shutdown of fisheries, total collapse of fisheries, salmon industry collapsing. But we also have, as I've stated before, the U.S. Navy using depleted uranium, highly radioactive ammunition for practice off the North American West Coast. How good can that be for the fishing industry or the oceans? Lots of factors affecting the oceans, not just Fukushima, all of it's coming together. Now, what's affecting us? Let's get to that. And here's a headline that should be shocking. And as I've been over again and again, this, these heavy metals coming down in our breathable air column, a primary metal being aluminum that's showing up everywhere, including in the bees. We have peer-reviewed study for bees now. Anyone can search bees aluminum. They'll find those studies. The bees are packed full of aluminum. It's killing them. Bumblebee study now, also packed full of aluminum. Whales, you can search whales Aluminum, and you'll find a peer-reviewed study of a thousand whales from all over the globe packed with aluminum. It's floating down through the air column. It's part of the climate engineering programs, and it's being absorbed by all life. So here's the headline from the UK. Dementia overtakes heart disease as the leading cause of death in the UK. That should be shocking, absolutely shocking. And the stats in the US are likely very similar, but the CDC is not painting a clear picture of what's happening here. Dementia, a neurological disorder known to be connected with aluminum exposure, now the leading cause of death in the UK from this report. Diseases related to the brain health, such as dementia and Alzheimer's, are now more fatal than any other illness in the UK, according to its Office for National Statistics. Dementia recently overtook heart disease as the top cause of death for inhabitants of England and Wales, according to a recent BBC article. Final statement from that report. While we all know that dementia is on the rise in the United States as well, these alarming statistics out of UK clearly point to a serious problem for modern society. And our current, quote, sick care model for medicine is ill-equipped to help. We are all getting dumber by the day. We're all absorbing these materials that are coming down in the air column. Lab tests from all over the globe prove it. We have some 70 tests in California alone. We've had escalations of aluminum in our precipitation, which means it's in the air column. In Northern California, tests processed at the state-certified lab that escalated, in some cases, in a single rain event, as much as 50,000% from an already high baseline test that contained aluminum. There are unimaginable amounts of metal coming down in our air column. And our legal team is working on how to get through the system. Geoengineeringwatch.org, a California activist, and the Minnesota Natural Health Coalition, an educational nonprofit organization based in Minneapolis. The geoengineeringwatch.org is a data and research repository on the critical issue of global climate engineering and climate intervention programs. Uh, that website has had over 26 million people visit, and roughly 20,000 people visit that website daily. Uh, Minnesota Natural Health Coalition is a nonprofit 
focusing on natural health and health freedom choices. Uh, they've taken an interest in geoengineering because of their belief that geoengineering poses uh, substantial harm to health. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to offer comments here in support of House Bill 6011, the Geoengineering Act of 2017. And I begin my comments by stating categorically that man's ability to, to deliberately manipulate and control the climate and change our environment is no longer science fiction. More than 25 years ago, in 1991, the U.S. Patent Trademark Office assigned to Hughes Aircraft Company a method of reducing atmospheric or global warming by seeding the atmosphere with a layer of metallic particles, such as aluminum oxide. That patent is currently owned and been assigned by Raytheon, a defense contractor. In 2009, a report by the United Kingdom's Royal Society, which uh, Reverend Price referred to, said this about geoengineering, quote, appropriate governance mechanisms for regulating deployment of geoengineering methods should be established before they are needed in practice. And these mechanisms should be developed in the near future if geoengineering is to be considered as a potential option for mitigating climate change. The Royal Society further posited that there is clear need for governance of research involving large-scale field testing of some geoengineering techniques, especially solar radiation management and ecosystem intervention methods, which could have significant undesirable effects which might not easily be confined to a specific area. So I'm not going to go through the entire chronology of the number of congressional hearings and United Nations hearings and reports on this subject. But to put it succinctly, just last month, as uh, Mr. Price uh, spoke, researchers at Harvard University announced a project to send aerosol injections into the Earth's atmosphere in what is probably going to be the world's largest geoengineering experiment to date. <coughs> now, given this brief history, there can be no dispute that the technology to deliberately manipulate the Earth's climate is real. It has been studied and written about for decades. And academics and political leaders right now are seriously considering experimentation with the possibility of deploying geoengineering. These are technologies to intentionally manipulate the atmosphere and our environment as a plan of last resort, a plan B, if you will, to counteract the effects of climate change because our society has not been able to control emissions. And fossil fuels is still the energy of the dead. Now is the time to establish policy in this vital area, beginning with public oversight of geoengineering. Now, House Bill 6011 is an important step to ensure that no one engages in climate engineering within the state of Rhode Island without the express approval of state officials and only after careful review by state agencies with the expertise to assess risks and the efficacy of these proposals with input from the public. Now, we support 6011 for the following reasons. First and foremost, Bill 6011 is necessary to protect human health and safeguard the environment. The 1991 patent, now owned by Raytheon, proposed seeding the atmosphere with metallic particles such as aluminum oxide. Now, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to high levels of aluminum can result in respiratory and neurological problems, possibly including Alzheimer's disease. Geoengineering methods also propose seeding the atmosphere with sulfate aerosols, sulfur dioxide, hydrogen sulfide. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, exposure to sulfur dioxide affects the lungs, and at high levels may result in burning of the nose, throat, breathing difficulties, and severe airway obstructions. Exposure to hydrogen sulfide is the worst. Again, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, a few breaths of air containing high levels of hydrogen sulfide